Insider Trading with Warren Horton, Talk Sports Man in the Know. Now, our old mate uh, Rafi Honigstein, German football correspondent uh, on Twitter, was saying earlier on um, uh, that ba- the Bayern weren't interested in Angel Di Maria. So uh, Bayern weren't interested. He says not. He claims not. Are you hearing that? You oh, hearing that'd be a good things? fit for them, mate. Yeah. Well, it's from from what I've been told again over the weekend and over the last and um, over today as well. PSG are favourites to sign him. As I've mentioned, it's going to be a loan with a view to a permanent deal to kind of defer the payment from now to next year's financial financial um, financial figures. Again, what's what's happening is um, <clears throat> Qatari owners. It's been a month of Ramadan, so a lot of things have, have kind of slowed down in in terms of the business operation. Now you will expect to see the pace in this deal pick up over the next couple of weeks. As I said, loan around eight to ten million pound loan fee. And then it will be a 60 to 65 million pounds transfer fee from Real Madrid to PSG for Angel Di Maria. United are interested, but they, but PSG are much, much further down the line. We're getting this deal done. Um, other players leaving Madrid. I mean, Kadira keeps coming up. You, mm. You're hearing again that Arsenal aren't interested. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. They're not. He's not a player on the list. But obviously, it seems like William Carvalho is on their list mm. as well. Remember, he, we, 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 I, told, I told you earlier in the window that he'd agreed to join Manchester United. That was the case then. That was under the um, under the tutelage of um, David Moyes when he was manager. He'd teed up that deal. Same as what he did with Luke Shaw. And under Herrera and one or two others as well. It's but, reported one was we were talking about it earlier on. He's on just over four thousand pounds a month wages. That's what he earns currently at Sporting. That's they've, incredible. They've I read the same report as well. They've been the reports, and yeah, he's got a thirty-two million buyout clause. So he must those have, two don't add up. Do he they? must have really improved when he first signed that contract. <laughs> yeah. Put it that way. It's, yeah, it's, I think if, if you were his agent, and I understand he had a couple of big, hit, you would have been going in once things started to pick up. Normally, you, we know the way these things. Are. The yeah. agent goes and says, "Well, you know, William's not the player he was a year ago." And I think yeah. that should be, but you know, I, I, I don't think the player should have said to his agent, I'm not the player I was a year yeah. ago. I think get I'm playing some, quite I mean, well. Get me some well more now. money. Is the Any chance of me getting paid a bit more? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Ridiculous. Some players I know even after a couple of games are banging a few goals. That's for more money. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they, certainly, they certainly do. <laughs> yeah, again, a player on, on Arsenal's radar as well. But again, it'll be, I think you've got about a 36, 37 million pound bio clause. And, Seems like Arsenal may be talking about paying a lot less than that. Again, I thought I think he's a re- it'd, be, it'd be a really good signing for Arsenal, someone who can sit in front of that back back four and genuinely dictate the pace of play. So saw him in the World Cup as well for Portugal, forced his way into that team, played really well for them. So again, it'll be interesting if they can get him and one or two others. You, you expect Arsenal to really yeah, he, seriously he's challenge. He's a prospect, but Gadir is the. The finished article, isn't yeah. it? Saying so, you know, that is, there is a difference there. What about the Connor Wickham story for West Ham? I mean, that, is, there, is there anything in this? They are looking for a bit of cover for Andy Carroll, aren't they? Mm. Well, they're, they're looking. They are definitely looking for a couple of strikes. They're looking. They're, they're speaking to Samuel Eto'o about a possible deal there as well. There were some reports about Etu. Let me just talk about Etu for a second. Mm-hmm. About there were some reports about sort of um, the the, the, um, the the talks between his representatives and West Ham talking about excessive wage demands. Again, my understanding is they're also looking at Hugo Almeida, but back to Etu, he is prepared to take a pretty substantial pay cut to a stay in the Premier League and possibly... Not all William Carvalho levels. Uh, no, I'd I'd join West Ham. I'd Sunderland say, the show with some interest I'd there say as well. I'd buyer beware with Etu. He, said, uh, you know, he showed at times some touches last year, yeah. some moments where he was really good, but he also showed a lot of the time that he wasn't the player he was five years ago. Abs- no. well, nowhere, clearly, nowhere, clearly, nowhere near. That's ab- that, well, that's clearly the case. If that was the case, he'd, he'd be still be playing his mm. trade at the top level mm. with, with one of the elite clubs in Europe, with all due respect to the, the likes of West Ham and one or two others who were showing some interest in him as well. But in terms of Conor Wickham, I, I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm genuinely not sure about what's going on there, but all I know is that whatever does happen with him, on the back of what happened last season, he needs to settle down and get playing regularly, not think, be thinking about a move. I think Sunderland would be the best place for him at the moment. He did really well for them, and they did really well with him. It would seem a shame. They were good for each other, weren't yeah, they? They were very good he, for each other. He, he does move on. I, I, Graham Courtney was talking last night on Danny Kelly's show about him possibly going to Newcastle, which would be, I mean, not something that, wow. you know, they'd... Following Jack Cole back there yeah, as well. Yeah, that would go down Oh, that well. would not go down well uh, at all, would it? Manchester United get... Oh, sorry. I was going to say, it's interesting, the Conor Wickham thing, isn't it? I mean, he, he came back very late in the season... Got those goals that kind of effectively kept them up. I mean, he looks a confidence player, Paul. You, yeah. You, you, again, you see, he's a classic case of a young English player going from Ipswich to Sunderland for a lot, of, 
for a lot of money. Mm. Seemed like he was someone who was so, very well sought after, and it was a case of Steve Bruce of Sullen, let's get him, because a lot of other clubs are after him, and they get these players, and it seemed like they genuinely did not know what to do with him at the time, and went on a couple of unhappy loan spells, and you just need to get go. It's all about career moves, you know. There's a there's a the same issue at Manchester United with um the likes of Wolf, Wilfred Zaha as well, from Crystal Palace in the Championship to Manchester United. Was that probably a a move a, move a bit too big for him? We'll, we'll only know that in the well, next few months. Should we expect if well. a guy's playing regularly for Palace, should we expect to walk him mm. walk straight in the Man United? Too? Maybe people have you know odd expectations of players. They kind of expect them to train on too quickly. And what probably didn't help him as well. The man who signed him, Felix Ferguson, left that summer as well. So yeah. and you've got a manager like David Moyes who with all due respect to Wolf Azara, hasn't really got time to ease him into the team. This guy needs to get that Manchester United, he needs to get that first team ready, and he needs to get results himself to keep him in a job. Mm -hmm.